These are all Philacronathus mulleri, or otherwise commonly known as the Rainbow Stag Beetle, the Golden Stag Beetle, Magnificent Stag Beetle, the King Stag Beetle, Mueller Stag Beetle, it has as many names as it does colors, but let's just call it the Rainbow Stag Beetle for now. Let's talk about their scientific name, Philacronathus mulleri. This is so hard to pronounce. Taking the first word apart, philacro means bald, while nathus means jaw. So all together, philacronathus literally means bald jaw, and that's because the mandibles are smooth and lack hair that is observable in other stag beetles. And the second half, Mulleri, was named in honor of Baron Ferdinand von Mueller, a botanist of the Victorian government who named many of the Australian plants of today. As you can see from the intro, they come in a variety of colors. Selectively breeding these beautiful creatures produces the deep blue and purple beetles, as well as the rich green ones too. But if you were to come across one in the wild, they'll typically have this metallic green with incredible red streaks. I truly can't express enough how beautiful these beetles are, as the camera cannot do justice for how the exoskeleton reflects light. I've just been showing them males, but let's give the females some spotlight. Of course, there's some good old sexual dimorphism, and they have the same amazing sheen as the males, but are much smaller in body and mandible size. These cute critters can be found in the rainforest of northern Queensland of Australia and in New Guinea. They've been described to be quite rare in the wild as they seldomly make an appearance when the sun's out. Beautiful things don't ask for attention. But fun fact, these beetles have become the official symbol for the Entomological Society of Queensland. As with all beetles, their life starts as an egg, which the female lays into decaying wood infected with white rot fungi. It takes 10 to 14 days to hatch, then their larval stage begins. This stage can range greatly from one to three years, depending on the available nutrition, and this can affect their size as an adult. In especially poor nutritional conditions, it can take four years and the adult will emerge as a run. There are several other videos and resources that go deep into the breeding process that I'll link in the description below if you're interested. After metamorphosis emerges the adult which breaks out of their pupil cage using their newly developed mandibles and legs. Adult rainbow stag beetles can live from up to one to two years. As for diet, fruit and beetle jelly in captivity and indigenous fruit in nativity. Mating occurs throughout their first year as an adult and the males can get quite aggressive about the whole process. In fact, their use of their mandibles is twofold and different depending on what he's using it on. Scenario 1 When males are competing for a female, they'll clash heads and use their mandibles to fight. Their strategy is similar to certain rhinoceros beetles like the Kabukoshi. Check out the video to learn more about them. But back to these chromatic quarrelers. They use their mandibles as a lever to try to pass beneath their opponent's body or legs. They attempt to uproot their competitor into the air. Those successful in the wrestling matches moves on to mate. However, that's not the only use of their mandibles. Scenario 2. Facilitated mating. Opposing males are a hindrance to successfully passing down one's genes, but another comes in the form of an uncooperating female. Female stag beetles like to hide and conceal themselves underground or underneath a log of some sort, and males frankly don't like that. If a female is in a spot that isn't approachable, then the male will try to dislodge her by using his mandibles. Even more aggressively so, if the female's attempting to escape or hide, the male might use his mandibles to snatch the female and violently throw her around to exhaust her or carry her to a different spot. As an adult, the rainbow stag beetle doesn't really have many relationships besides one really toxic one, being the prey to many birds indiscriminate of the area. However, rainbow stag beetle symbiosis as a larva is interesting but quite morbid. But the larvae are commonly parasitized by the fly Amphibolia ignorata 
and the wasp leacos insularis 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 god damn i don't know i should have practiced these before i recorded the god dang script man one thing of neat notice though is that a beetle mordella elongatula emerged from a pupil cell of a wasp parasitoid which suggests that this beetle is a parasite of a parasite of a host but this is quite unusual for this kind of beetle so more needs to be researched now parasites are frankly scary so let's get away from the subject and talk about a more light-hearted symbiosis that Mozart would be a little too into. When the larval rainbow stag is happily eating away in their decaying temporary tree home, there is a stalker closely trailing by. The larvae of Schizorina atropunctata and Lenosoma are following and feeding on wood as well as our favorite beetle's shit. Yum. These beetles are amazing and truly, the camera isn't able to fully capture its technicolor beauty. But if you're interested in seeing more of this rainbow stag beetle, check out the stream that's live right now. I've been fortunate enough to get my hands on one of these and my hope is to grow this stream and channel so you too can vicariously care for this beetle. Please subscribe, like, and comment down below the what beetle I should talk about next and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.